Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now, today uh, we're going to be doing another video on the IBM Model M keyboard that I got recently at a yard sale. Now, if you haven't seen the overview video on this, I would highly recommend to click on screen right now um, or down below in the video description. Uh, basically, what I did in, in that video is I kind of went over what I got uh, with this keyboard and did a kind of brief video on this keyboard. It wasn't that long, but this video is going to be um, a sort of uh, restoration video and I guess you would say cleaning video. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is basically, you know, cleaning this thing because this, uh, you know, keyboard when I got it um, wasn't that dirty, but um, all, all of these keys, as you can see in this video clip here are you know they have uh, like a lot of dirt and you know grime on them from its I guess previous use and what we're gonna be doing in this video is just basically pulling all of these keycaps off and you know kind of cleaning the actual keyboard just to make it you know a little bit nicer and this is something that I usually do from time to time because a lot of things that I find at you know yard sales and uh, you know thrift stores and things like that um, they're not in the best condition. I rarely find something that's, you know, in, you know, like pristine condition. They're usually, you know, worn and you can see signs of use. And that's obviously the case with this keyboard. Um, however, this is, um, probably in, you know, pretty decent shape. I mean, there's not like any, you know, physical damage to it. There's just a lot of, you know, dirt and grime on the actual keys. So just to kind of make this process a little bit easier, I'm actually going to be taking off the actual frame of the keyboard, which is actually a pretty easy process. The only problem with it is, is there's these four screws on the back here. And to actually remove them, you need a special 5.5 millimeter nut driver. And I thought that I had one of these in my uh, iFixit toolkit, which I think I showcased in a, like a, a couple like repair videos that I did um, a while back. But I, I actually didn't have one. I had a five millimeter one, but not a five and a half millimeter. So I had to actually order one off of Amazon. I think it was about $5. I'll have the link to it down below. Here's the package for it. Um, and yeah, that this is what we're going we're to be using to, to uh, take off these uh, four screws. The people, there are actually um, like a couple uh, customer reviews over on Amazon and they, and they actually said that they used it for the IBM Model M and then it works great. That's another reason why um, that I got it. Um, but so yeah, here's the back here with the four screws. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be just, you know, setting it down here and uh, taking off the screws. Um, I actually think I had a 5.5 millimeter nut driver, but the problem with it was is that it was too thick and it didn't fit in those holes. So that's why I had to order this one because like it had to be very thin in the like the actual like you know driver itself had to be really thin, which was you know one of the issues with it because these are you know very small holes. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be uh, taking off the screws. It's it's not really. It's just basically four screws. That, that's, I, I thought there were there were like actually screws under those like you see on the bottom of the keyboard. There, those those like you know two little white caps. I thought there were screws under there, but there's actually not. It's just these these four screws take off the entire front frame of the keyboard, which is it makes this thing really easy to you know perform repairs on if you had to do something like that. Uh, you know, which is which is good if this keyboard you know turned out to be broken, which it wasn't. Um, so yeah, once we have uh, the four screws off, um, the whole frame just basically comes out like that, and we are inside of the keyboard. And this is going to make it a lot easier for us to take off all of these keycaps and clean, you know, kind of blow out all the dust on the inside because there's a, like a, a lot of dust, a, a, as you can see, especially to the left of there. Um, there's a lot of dust and and stuff as you see where I you know kind of zoom in here on the keys um, Yeah, they're not really looking that great. Uh, this th this keyboard wasn't cleaned I, I guess before that I bought it uh, Which is you know, one thing that I thought was kind of funny is if you notice uh, at like the number pad The the number pad doesn't look like it was used like at all, but like the main keyboard It looks like it was you know used very heavily but like I guess they didn't use uh, the you know uh, number pad very often. But just you know to uh, take off these keycaps, it's very simple. You just you know pull them all off. It's not really that difficult. 
and these are you know key caps like you know, I'm not actually pulling off the actual key mechanism and I actually didn't decide to clean those because those didn't really look dirty at all um, it was just the actual caps and you can see me just you know kind of pulling them off here I'm probably gonna you know, like you know speed up the, this uh, clip or something but yeah they just you know pull off very easily which made this uh, this process didn't take too long so at, at this point what I started to do is actually take off the keycaps uh, from the uh, from the model M and this was really the only um, part of the keys that were really dirty the, uh, the actual key mechanism under it wasn't really that dirty uh, there were some keys like the shift and enter key and some of the keys on the uh, like a number pad where I, I actually had to pull off the entire key mechanism just leaving the uh, like the actual buckling spring um, and that's just the way that uh, it was designed so um, but yeah I mean pr like all that like the actual keys like not the key caps but like like the actual gray blank keys weren't really that dirty so I didn't bother taking those off to uh, clean them but you can see me here in this footage which I'm probably gonna you know speed up I just kind of take them all off and throw them into a pile and, and you can see kind of here I uh, actually compare the uh, like a key from the number pad and a key from the main part of the keyboard you can see that the number pad key looks significantly cleaner and less used than uh, the the key on the main keyboard which kind of proves my theory that yeah this the, the number pad wasn't really used that often but, but I still decided to take off all of the number pad keys as well just to clean them so here is the model M uh, with all the key caps removed and as I was saying in the, the you know previous clip uh, some of the keys I actually had to take off the entire uh, mechanism because that's just the way that it was designed so you can see here uh, like with the space bar you know you can see like the actual uh, buckling spring and here are you know or here is the pile of all the keys and then to the right of that there's a pile of the keys where the whole uh, mechanism is like attached to the key and I just uh, had to wash those uh, separately because I just wanted to make sure that um, those were thoroughly cleaned so now we're going to move into the actual cleaning process uh, for the IBM Model M's keycaps and essentially what I did for this is I got um, a, a colander bowl here and I took all of the uh, key caps and I just uh, put them in into this bowl and just kind of uh, put them under some warm running water and I uh, kind of threw some soap in there and just kind of uh, you know slosh them around um, I did however try to wash the uh, you know larger keys like the space bar and the shift keys separately because those I just kind of wanted to make sure were clean because those are keys that are obviously used more often especially like the space bar and they were obviously larger so I just wanted to you know kind of make sure those were thoroughly cleaned um, and this was probably the most time-consuming process of this uh, entire project I probably spent about 20 minutes making sure that each key well, I mean, not not 20 minutes on each key. That would be a little bit ridiculous. But um, I, I spent 20 minutes probably washing all all of these keys out um, and you know getting all of the dirt all, all off of them. And that was most likely because that this dirt has been on this keyboard for like 30 years and it's never been cleaned before. So it it just took a while um, to you know clean it out. So if you're you know working on like a 30 year old keyboard like this uh, be prepared for that because um, it's probably gonna take a while to wash out the actual keys um, but once I got it done I actually had to let the keys dry for about a day I think that I let them dry for a day I, I actually tried to start uh, like reassembling the keyboard um, but it, it, I just noticed that the keys were still wet and it didn't really uh, obviously, I, I don't want you know wet keys on on the keyboard because it's not gonna not gonna uh, work out too well because um, wet things and electronics don't really mix well. Another little issue that I had was with the uh, larger keys like the enter key. Um, if you noticed, I'm, I'm not sure if I actually uh, have footage of it, but on the um, underside of the keys there are some tiny little holes, um, and there was. Uh, a lot of the water or not really a lot of it but some of the water actually got caught in those holes and I actually had to shake out like 
all of those keys to get to you know get the water um, out of it because it was not drying even after a day where all of the actual key caps had dried those um, the water was still kind of stuck in there so I had to kind of you know shake all those keys out um, so that was another kind of issue uh, but that was kind of the one thing that was uh, preventing me from putting the keyboard together for that day because I was wondering why that those keys were not drying and just because there was water stuck uh, in those holes so um, but but once I got all the keys dried I then decided to actually start using uh, some compressed air to blow out the rest of or to um, blow out all the dust in the actual frame of the keyboard and uh, this didn't take that long it, it, but I, I just used this uh, compressed air machine to actually blow out uh, all of the dust that was stuck underneath the keys and all those like you know big hair balls that for some reason were on the left side I, I don't really know how those got there I guess they were just dust balls um, surprisingly, there was also a lot of dust on the top of the keyboard, which was kind of uh, surprising to me. But I just basically used this machine to blow all that out. And once I finished that, I think the next thing I did was moved into actually uh, reassembling the keyboard. And you know, this was this was obviously when all the keys were were dry, you know. But and this actually, what I had to do was get a layout of the IBM uh, Model M keyboard um, you know obviously the same one I have the uh, the 139-1401 model um, I got a key layout of that uh, up on my actual computer screen and I just kinda looked at that as I was uh, putting all the keys back because obviously I don't want to put keys in the wrong place um, I know the like the layout of a uh, of a uh, traditional QWERTY keyboard somewhat well, but I, d I just wanted to make sure that I was, you know, doing it right. Um, a, a lot of the keys, as you can see, I'm uh, messing with uh, the space bar here. Um, I think that the, the space bar and the plus key on the number pad uh, didn't go in um, normally at first. I, I, I had to actually take them out and kind of mess with the actual uh, spring mechanism. Um, until that I got it right, but once I did that, I just, it, it was pretty easy from there and, you know, pretty straightforward, just kind of finding where all the keycaps were. And once all of the keys were back on the Model M, it was time to take the front piece and reassemble it to the bottom piece. Now, I actually had cleaned this before that I did this, but I just I didn't take footage of that because I figured it would be kind of boring. Um, but once I did that, it was uh, obviously time to flip it over and screw back in those four screws. And with that, the Model M was back to being looking brand new I mean honestly this thing looks looks way better than it did before I'll, I'll have a few uh, before and after shots um, but just cleaning this thing makes it look a lot better which is why that I usually do this with a lot of the older uh, electronics that I get that have been sitting in someone's attic for like 30 years um, but once I did this I just decided to plug it into a older Pentium 4 machine that I had to actually see if the thing worked um, and it turns out that it did, which was nice. I mean, I didn't break the thing during this process, obviously. Uh, so so that's good. Um, but the reason I had to pull out uh, this older machine is because my main computer does not have a PS2 uh, port. And this older computer didn't. I did not have a PS2 to USB adapter. Um, but this keyboard worked perfectly fine. I typed out uh, a brief notepad document where I typed something random. I don't really remember what it was, but... Um, 
yeah, so that is pretty much it for this video. Uh, this probably wasn't that long. Um, the audio recording is going on about 20 minutes, but that's because I've made a couple mistakes in the audio recording. But um, yeah, so this is the uh, restoration of the IBM Model M. Um, as I said, I am planning on doing some more videos on this. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't make this video earlier. I was kind of working on this throughout the week, and I haven't gotten around to narrating until today, which is Saturday. So I'm going to try to get this out by today or maybe Sunday. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a typing demo. Like I said, I was going to be you know, comparing the, the uh, typing on the Model M to my... Uh, main keyboard which is the Corsair K65 um, and then probably like some you know, like you know OEM cheapo keyboard um, that's probably going to be a video and then obviously the full time travel video on this keyboard will um, probably happen as well um, so be looking out for those um, obviously normal videos will be coming out um, I, I know that I haven't really been like as prompt with making these videos as I uh, normally am, and I just think that's because that I um, kind of have, have been trouble finding things to make videos on. Um, so, because, you know, obviously I need to be interested in, you know, what we're doing to, you know, make the video, like, interesting for you guys, because obviously if I'm not interested in making the video and I'm just doing it just to make a video, it's not really going to come out very well. So I kind of try to avoid doing that and just make a video when I have something interesting which I, I, I still want to make a video every single week for you guys because I, I think that's a good, you know, balance, I guess. And, you know, it keeps you guys interested in the videos. But if, if you guys have any thing that you want to see, if, if you guys want to see more videos on the IBM Model M or if you have some sort of interesting video suggestion, um, if you want to see um, one of the uh, older computers that I have that I haven't showcased, uh, like, uh, on my... Uh, site teammmjd.com if you go there I have a list of all the uh, older computers and consoles that I have uh, in my collection most of which I have not made videos on yet um, so yeah if you're just interested in you know seeing some of those definitely definitely you know leave a comment down below because I am always reading what you guys have to say uh, about the videos because I'm you know kind of looking for things that you guys want to see on the channel um, and things that I'd be interested in making. So yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, definitely be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to support the channel um, by simply shopping on Amazon, I'm kind of trying this new Amazon affiliate program. Um, I'll have a link down below where you can uh, go to my Amazon affiliate site, which is just Amazon.com. And it's like my like user ID or something, which is Team MJD something, um, and you can actually support the channel by shopping on Amazon. I will actually get um, a small cut of whatever you buy on Amazon, which is great. So you still get the the same deal. This is not a scam or anything. This is uh, straight through Amazon. This is their like you know affiliate program. A lot of YouTubers use this to kind of uh, you know. Uh, like support their um, you know funding of a lot of the things that they do on, on their channels and the reason I've decided to do it is to kind of uh, ramp up kind of or, or, to, or to kind of just get you know funds to kind of make better videos because obviously there's a lot of things that I would like to make videos on that I cannot because of financial reasons and a lot of uh, video equipment that I would like to get that I cannot because of financial reasons as well. And this, I think, is going to help me kind of with that if you guys decide to, you know, use this uh, link. So yeah, guys, uh, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, again, just thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your amazing support here on the channel. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.